Welcome back to San Antonio Living. I know you've heard of the popular series Chicken Soup for the Soul. And if you're a longtime San Antonio Living viewer, then you've met this woman before. This is Melissa Wooten. She is here joining us to tell us about her stories featured in this book. And I say Wooten, that's the better way to say it. So good to see you. <laughs> Thank you. Now, the last time you were here, you had just written a story. Uh, it was the first one for Chicken Soup for the Soul. Mm -hmm. And it was about the loss of your daughter. Yeah. And since that time, you've written several more. Let's talk a little bit about your writing journey and how it began? Well, I came on um, Chicken Soup for the Soul devotional stories for tough times. It mm -hmm. was the first story I wrote. It was about a sign that we received from Kylie um, on Thanksgiving Day. And, and I sent it in and it was accepted. And I came and spoke to you about that. Mm -hmm. And right after I sent that one in, I sent in a couple more, which were also accepted and were published. Mm -hmm. But what I don't think was immediately obvious when I came and visited with you was that I was severely, severely depressed at that time. Yeah. And I remember um, the night before coming on with you and just crying in bed and thinking, I'm supposed to be coming on and talk and, and be this inspiration to people. And are they going to be able to tell? Are they going to be able to look at me and just see that I'm not okay and I'm a hot mess? And now, looking, I'm, I'm happy to say I'm only a lukewarm mess now. But <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I I couldn't tell. And we should go back a little bit for our viewers. You lost your daughter uh, just before her 17th birthday. Right. She was killed in a car accident just minutes from your home. Right. Um, as part of the recovery process, you started to write. Mm -hmm. And clearly, it was a facade because though you're writing uh, inside, you were not recovering. I, I was writing and um, I wrote the stories and then it just kind of stopped and uh, I kind of stayed in bed mm -hmm. and, and I was going nowhere. I was just kind of stuck in my grief. And my husband, Joey, um, he decided he was going to take action and he came in there one day and was like, Come on, get up. We're going outside. And he took me outside and he had set up um, just a makeshift workbench. And he had all these project pieces of furniture, this, these old, you know, beat up pieces of furniture out in the garage, from the garage. He had pulled out from the garage and, and we started making them over. And I was like, I don't want to do this. My daughter is gone. I don't care mm -hmm. about this kind of thing anymore. And um, he said, just sit here with me. So I did, and he would refinish it. And he'd ask me, what color, what color do you think we should do it when you would finish a piece? And I was like, I don't care. You know, I was like, I'm not, ta I'm not talking to you. You just do what you need to do. But I'm, yeah. I'm mad. <laughs> so this, I'm hurt. This went on for several, several pieces of furniture. Yeah. And you just sat by while he did the work. And what a persistent husband. And what an enduring husband. You know, it, it, it's just so heartwarming. Well, one day, there was something that finally changed. And... You decided that you were ready to step out of the black and white and, and head into the color of life. He asked me, you know, like you would always do, what color do you want to see this? And I finally answered. I said, turquoise. I'd like to see it. Let's paint it turquoise. Mm -hmm. And he was like, okay. So we painted it turquoise. And when we did, um, the chest that we painted was real beat up and it had a lot of scars. And um, and this is a picture of it right yeah, here. That's the a, that's a very, chest. yeah, that's the famous turquoise chest. Mm -hmm. And... I saw it, and it was perfectly painted, and it was beautiful, and it, it you know, it had been just painted plain old turquoise, and, and just seeing it just vi bright and vibrant like that, it just kind of, I don't know, just set something off and upset me, and so I went and I grabbed some, something, I just took some stain and painted over it, and was mm -hmm. angry, and Joey's like, what are you doing? So he started wiping it off, but when he wiped it off, it seeped into those, you know, crevices, into the wounds, into the scars, mm -hmm. and as he wiped it away, they were, became more evident, and it was, um, like we were able to see beauty in those scars, and it was like it was is being transformed, but so many times I think you go through something like that and you come away with, um, you know, these wounds, and I think that it's neat to see that beauty can come from that, um, that it can, you know, make a difference and you can, and you can still shine despite what you've been through. So you yourself ha have been painted a little bit. Oh, I've been painted a lot. <laughs> and we're starting <laughs> be honest. to cover up some of those wounds. I know they're still there. Uh, uh, they're buried a, a little bit deeper maybe than the last time you were here. It's all part of the healing process. And, and if this sounds like it would make a beautiful story, it does. It's called Refurbished Me. Uh, it is your latest piece featured in the newest Chicken Soup for the Soul book. It's called Lemons to Lemonade. And it's the story of transformation. It's the story of covering up those wounds and, and starting to get back to a life because you've got a whole lot of living ahead of you yeah and, and and you've taken this and taken this gift that your husband has given you and you guys have turned it into a business yes <laughs> <laughs> um, an amazing business completely by accident but it has just it has turned into a business and we do we we do it strictly on Facebook and 
and what a healing that has been because the support that we have mm -hmm. gained a, a little over 5,000 followers in, in about a year's time and just that it's almost become like my family I've shared mm -hmm. my journey with them and they are so supportive and um, just you know just reinforce the the work that I'm trying to do and um, just in myself you yeah. know and so it's funny because it, our, our tagline is inspiration for the heart and home. Mm -hmm. I share a lot of my personal journey. I share my stories um, in the furniture. And uh, yeah, I think that the people behind Sheep and Teak, and I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about the followers, have been as big a part of my healing as my husband and my son and my, mm -hmm. and my friend, you know, my family, the, the people at home. And yeah. they've been as, as, as amazing part of my journey as well. I think it's a testament that you've got to open up yourself and let people in to, to allow that healing process to begin. And you've certainly been able to do that. And I know we're coming up on the fifth anniversary. Will it be five years? Yeah, it'll be five years. December 18th, 2008 is when she died and was buried on her 17th birthday, December 23rd. So, yeah, we're coming up on five years. It, just, it doesn't even seem possible. I know it doesn't get easier, but are you in a better place? Oh, much so. Yeah, I didn't cry last night. <laughs> <laughs> That's great to hear. I was I excited. Know, I know, but you know what? You can anytime. That's what we're here for. <laughs> Melissa, I'm so excited that you stopped by this morning. Uh, you, stick around because Melissa is going to share some of her pieces with us right here on San Antonio Living. The refurbished pieces, uh, the beautiful pieces that her husband and herself have worked on together. We'll be sharing those with you a little bit later on during this hour of San Antonio Living. If you'd like to uh, read Melissa's story, you can find it. It's Refurbished Me Inside Chicken Soup for the Soul, the new from Lemons to Lemonade book. Uh, it's available for you right now. And by the way, or actually August 13th, that's when it'll be available for you. There will be a book signing at the Bracken Village and there will be details about that on Facebook. So here's where you can find Melissa on facebook.com slash chic ventique. That's her Facebook page with all of uh, the beautiful pieces that she's been working on. Additional stories will be coming out in upcoming books as well. And we'll be checking in with her a little bit bit later on. All right.